Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And uh, today's topic of discussion is the paranasal sinuses. They are nothing but some small air filled spaces present in the bonds around the nasal cavity. So, let's have a clear cut description about the same. So, the paranasal sinuses, they are air filled spaces present within the bonds around the nasal cavity, which opens into the lateral wall of nasal cavity by small apertures that permit both the equilibration of air that is the passage of air and the clearance of the mucus from the sinuses into the nose. So the sinus are nothing but some air filled spaces which opens into the lateral wall of nose and it permits the passage of air as well as the clearance of the mucus secreted within the sinus cavities. So they are classified into different types as follows. There is frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, sphenoidal sinus and the ethmoidal sinus. So there is an interesting fact to remember these structures. So each of these sinuses with the name frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, sphenoidal sinus and ethmoidal sinus lies within the respective bonds. So it's easy to remember the frontal sinus lies in the frontal bone, maxillary sinus within the maxillary bone, the sphenoidal sinus within the sphenoid bone and the ethmoidal sinus within the ethmoidal labyrinth or the ethmoidal bone. Okay. So the paranasal sinuses, here there is a visualization, here you can see the frontal sinus, the maxillary sinus and the small ethmoidal sinus lying within the ethmoidal labyrinth of ethmoidal bone. And this is the sagittal plane section so that you can visualize the sphenoidal sinus which is lying deeper than that of the other sinuses. So in this cross-sectional image you can clearly see the sphenoidal sinus here and the frontal sinus here. So you can see the frontal sinus which is present in the frontal bone, the sphenoidal sinus present in the sphenoidal bone. And uh, here is the lateral wall of nose. Here will be the opening of all the sinuses. And these projections are bony shelf like projections called as concha, the superior, middle and the inferior concha. And the space lying just beneath each of them is the superior meatus, middle meatus and the inferior meatus. So here I have taken out a section of the face so that you can visualize the internal structure of the paranasal sinuses. So here you can clearly see the maxillary sinus opening into the lateral wall of nose. Here you can see the frontal sinus which is also opening into the lateral wall of nose. So the frontal sinus. The surface marking of the frontal sinus can be done by marking three points. So it is a triangular space which is marked on the face by three points. The first one is the nasion, that is the central point here, then a point 2.5 cm above it and then the third point which is at the junction of the medial one third and the lateral two third of the supraorbital margin. So the medial one third and the lateral two third of the margin, the supraorbital margin is happening here. So joining three points, if we draw a triangle, that marks the frontal sinus on the forehead. And the features of the frontal sinus are explained as follows. So all these headings are particularly important when you are reproducing it on a paper. So these are very important. The location of the frontal sinus, it lies in the frontal bone deep to the superciliary arch. So you'll, there comes a question, what is superciliary arch? So here you can see a small projection on the frontal bone. That projection is termed as the superciliary arch. So the frontal sinus lies deep to the superciliary arch in the frontal bone. So it's clear for you, right? Then the shape of the sinus, it is triangular in shape and the opening of the sinus is to the middle meatus at the anterior end of hiatus semilunaris. It's not a new term to you because you have studied the lateral wall of nose previously. 
So the lateral wall of nose in the middle meatus, there is a area called as the hiatus semilunaris. To the anterior end of the hiatus semilunaris is the opening of frontal air sinus. Then the blood supply is by the supraorbital vessels, which includes both the artery as well as the vein. Then the nerve supply is by the supraorbital nerve, since it is present above the orbit. The second sinus is the maxillary sinus and it can be marked on the surface by these four points, the roof by the inferior orbital margin because it lies below the orbit, the floor by the alveolus of maxilla that we will be discussing when we are studying the osteology of the facial bones in detail, then the base that is formed by the lateral wall of the nose. You already know what is lateral wall of nose. Then the apex is formed by the zygomatic process of the maxilla. So these are the features to mark the maxillary sinus on the face. So this is the surface marking and the features are the location of this maxillary sinus is present on the body of maxilla bone and it is the largest of all the other sinuses. And the shape, it is pyramidal in shape as we have seen the boundaries it is having a pyramidal shape and the opening is to the middle meatus that is the lower part of the hiatus semilunaris. So previously in the frontal sinus it was opening to the anterior end of the hiatus semilunaris while this one that is the maxillary sinus opens into the lower part of the hiatus semilunaris and the blood supply is by the facial, infraorbital and the greater palatine vessels, while the nerve supply is carried out by the infraorbital, the anterior, middle, posterior and superior alveolar nerves. So these are the nerves that supply the maxillary sinus. The third sinus is the sphenoidal sinus. Its location is within the body of the sphenoid bone. We have seen the picture. In the previous picture we have seen the sphenoid sinus which is located within the sphenoid bone that I'll show you in a while and it opens into the sphenoethmoidal recess which is present in the lateral wall of the nose that we have studied previously. Then the blood supply is by the posterior ethmoidal and internal carotid artery branches while the venous drainage is particularly into one sinus called as a cavernous sinus. It's a very important thing to remember because the sphenoidal sinus, that area is drained into the cavernous sinus, which comes in the brain venous drainage. Then the nerve supply is by the posterior ethmoidal nerve. So here you can see the sphenoidal sinus, which opens into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Then you can see the sphenoid bone here, the part of sphenoid bone which forms the body of the sphenoid bone is having the sphenoidal sinus. So this is the representation of the sphenoidal sinus. So this diagram you can draw. Then comes the ethmoidal sinus. The location, it is numerous small intercommunicating spaces which lies within the labyrinth of ethmoid bone and it is divided into three groups. So it is present in the previous picture we have seen it is present in the ethmoidal labyrinth and it is composed of three groups from anterior to posterior, the anterior group, the middle group and the posterior group. So it's easy to remember there is an anterior group, a middle group just behind it and then a posterior group behind that. So the anterior group is composed of 1 to 11 air cells. The air cells are nothing but small pockets of air and the middle one is composed of 1 to 7 air cells while the posterior one consists of 1 to 7 air cells. So these are the ethmoidal sinuses. And the opening of the ethmoidal sinus is particularly different from the others because each group will open into different places. So the first group that is the anterior group it opens into the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris while the middle one opens into the middle meatus and the posterior one to the superior meatus. And the nerve supply is by the anterior ethmoidal nerve 
and the middle and posterior part is supplied by the posterior ethmoidal nerve. So this concludes the description regarding the paranasal sinuses.